Minivan Life Layout Analysis of No Build Build Social media is flooded with mesmerizing videos and photos of van life conversions. However, for enthusiasts like us, who are amateur van life enthusiasts, we typically drive minivans or SUVs. Nonetheless, many people transform them into incredibly practical and comfortable living spaces. This video aims to analyze common conversion designs, classify and analyze their various aspects, providing a reference for those planning to modify their vehicles and embark on the van life journey. Why choose a minivan or SUV? Before diving into van life, consider vehicle size. Assess the overall pros and cons of different models and analyze factors such as interior space and comfort. The interior height is measured based on the rear seats being folded down. Van. Pros, larger interior space, well equipped for basic living, offers more customization possibilities. Cons, higher vehicle height limits access to low clearance parking lots, road restrictions apply, and maintenance costs are significantly higher than minivans. Interior height, enabling not just sitting but also standing and moving comfortably. Minivan. Pros, good space for basic living amenities. More discreet compared to vans, perfect for stealth camping. Cons, lower height compared to vans, unable to stand inside. Interior height, enough space to place low chairs for resting. SUV. Pros, fewer terrain limitations, capable of off-road adventures to places vans can't reach. Cons, smaller space compared to minivans, limited in amenities. Interior height, possible to sit on the vehicle floor, but lower comfort level. Compact car. Pros, easy parking in urban areas. Cons, limited interior space, only suitable for sleeping, not conducive to extended activities inside the vehicle. Interior height, with the rear seats flattened, unable to sit upright comfortably inside. Different vehicle types offer varying conveniences and spaces, allowing you to choose according to your needs. For those still working in urban areas, minivans and SUVs are more suitable. Minivans are more discreet compared to vans and offer sufficiently comfortable space. SUVs excel in off-road capabilities, reaching more places. This video primarily focuses on analyzing minivans, with a possibility of featuring SUVs future. Changes in seats. We'll start by discussing the different applications starting from seat variations. Swivel seats. Some consider converting the driver's seat into a 180-degree swivel seat to enhance interior space. In certain vehicle designs, the driver's or passenger's seats are foldable. However, considering emergency situations where quick access to the driver's seat may be necessary to move the vehicle, we don't recommend making excessive alterations to these seats. Folding seats. During van life, it's typically just one or two people. However, occasional plans with friends or work situations requiring transporting colleagues might arise. Merely retaining the driver and passenger seats isn't sufficient. It's advisable to keep the original foldable seats intact for other passengers to use when needed. In van life, folding the seats creates a flat interior. Removable seats. One row is designed for easy removal, offering flexibility for passengers or cargo. These removable seats can also fold, but this may result in unevenness. It's recommended to remove these seats during van life to maximize rear space. Reinstall them when there's a need for passenger seating. These are some suggestions regarding seating. You can adjust the seat arrangement according to your needs, as they determine the maximum interior space. Proper distribution of items and creating activity space in van life depends on maximizing this interior space. Basic elements of part-time van life. Although everyone has different needs and definitions of van life, there aren't significant differences in some basic requirements and projects carried out in van life. Among the most important are 1. Floor. Current vehicle designs have reduced height differences when back seats fold down. But some irregularities persist, affecting comfort. To achieve a flat interior without a raised platform, a designed floor can address these issues. 
enhancing both activities and aesthetics within the vehicle. This floor can be fixed or movable, crucial for retaining flexible seating. Material choice is key, impacting aesthetics, comfort, and the overall quality. For instance carpets, solid wood, or tiles. 2. Bed and Seating Sleep is a critical aspect of car camping, essentially overnighting outdoors. A good mattress is key for quality sleep. Hard or uneven surfaces lead to backaches. At least one cushioned and flat mattress is essential for comfort. While standard thick mattresses are cozy, they take up space and lack storage. Folding mattresses create a more spacious environment. Despite some creases in foldable mattresses, their minimal impact on actual use due to limited lateral contact areas. It can also be converted into seating. 3. Sink and Water Water is an essential element in life. Especially outdoors where carrying enough and conserving resources is crucial. Setting up an off-grid water system in your vehicle can provide water for various uses inside. Installing a sink complements this system, facilitating simple cooking, boiling water, and personal hygiene during van life. 4. Storage. Storage helps prevent your car interior from looking like a cluttered space. Ensuring essentials are neatly organized for efficiency. Embedding storage into multifunctional elements like tables, window sunshades, seat back pouches, or roof nets optimizes space ingeniously. 5. Energy in Appliance. Energy is crucial. While using fire is cheaper and adds fun and warmth. It poses risks like carbon monoxide poisoning or fire hazards in the car. Opting for electricity not only makes cooking safer and more convenient, but also regulates internal temperature. Plus, many appliances now rely on electricity, like lights, phones, and fridges, ensuring connectivity during emergencies. Portable power systems are increasingly popular, with advancements in outdoor battery packs. Some even integrating solar power for convenient in-car electricity. 6. Toilet and Shower One challenge of van life is handling restroom needs. In a minivan, creating a conventional toilet setup is almost impossible due to limited space. While traveling, finding public restrooms or practicing leave no trace principles for outdoor needs can suffice. However, emergencies might necessitate an immediate solution, leading many to consider mobile flush toilets. Yet, sealed environments in vehicles can cause odor and cleaning issues even when not in use, impacting aesthetics. My suggestion is to equip a discreet, collapsible toilet under the driver's seat with biodegradable waste bags. Set it up when needed, seal the bag after use, and dispose of it in appropriate trash bins. Similarly, showers pose a challenge. While public baths or hot springs suffice usually, lacking nearby shower facilities or facing high costs can be problematic. In such cases, having an emergency shower setup in the van can be a preventive measure. Portable shower tents or wall-mounted shower fixtures designed for vehicles are available. If concerned about outdoor showers, a collapsible in-car shower bucket is an option, complemented by vanlife-friendly shower accessories like solar shower bags or portable pressurized water systems. These restroom and shower solutions, involving foldable, space-efficient gear stored discreetly, address practical needs without compromising space or aesthetics. These are general considerations for car camping, but preferences and space constraints can vary for each individual setup. Lay out your space. A. Preserve maximum interior vehicle height. Before we begin arranging, we should have a concept in mind, as mentioned in the previous chapters, which is to maximize the interior height of the vehicle as much as possible. After all, what we are discussing is engaging in various activities inside the vehicle, much like being at home. For instance, some layout designs adopt a raised platform design, utilizing the lower area for storage and creating a bed on top. While this model expands storage, it necessitates sacrifices in other aspects, especially when the vehicle height is limited. Storage beneath the bed might occupy vertical space, restricting the living space inside the vehicle, essentially leaving it only suitable for sleeping. Additionally, sleeping close to the vehicle roof might feel confining. Furthermore, in situations where outdoor conditions are unsuitable for setting up a tent or during rainy weather, this arrangement almost confines your living space inside the vehicle. 
We do not recommend this layout type unless the vehicle provides ample height. The interior should maintain maximum height and space to ensure relaxation and comfort inside. B. Basic Style of Placement We are gathering images of modified minivans shared online to categorize several common arrangement methods and analyze their pros and cons. Based on these images, the layouts can be broadly classified into the following categories. 1. Behind the driver's seat. When there's enough length space inside the car, the sink, water tank, and storage cabinets can be placed behind the driver's seat to maximize the central activity area. This setup allows unobstructed enjoyment of scenic views when the rear door is open and comfortably accommodates two people for rest. However, it creates a barrier between the driver's seat and the rear, potentially obstructing the driver's rearward visibility. This layout suits models with removable middle seats and foldable rear seats, without affecting the upright position of the rear seats, and even allowing the rear seats to function as a sofa. 2. Rear Type Similar to the previous type, this layout maximizes the central activity area, but the difference lies in placing the cabinets at the rear of the vehicle. This setup allows easy access to the driver's seat or items without obstructing the side door entry and exit. When the rear door is open, equipment placed at the back can be accessed externally as well. The drawback is the inability to enter or exit from the rear of the vehicle, and it may potentially obstruct the driver's rearward visibility. It suits models with foldable middle seats without affecting the use of the passenger seats. 3. Sidebar Type This type is particularly suitable for single-person van life setups. And some wider vehicle models also adopt this layout. However, if a double bed is placed, the sleeping area might become relatively cramped. This arrangement doesn't occupy much length space inside the vehicle while providing ample storage and operational space. If the side cabinets can bear weight and the platform is long and wide enough, this layout can even accommodate a bunk bed setup. 4. Floating Type The floating type is an extension of the previously mentioned layouts, devised for situations where some vehicles lack sufficient interior space. It resolves the issue of storage potentially encroaching on sleeping areas by elevating the storage platforms, enabling even smaller vehicles to accommodate a two-person van life setup without compromising the interior activity space. However, the downside is that the elevated structure might obstruct the view and prevent entry or exit from the rear of the vehicle. 5. L-Shape By combining the fundamental types mentioned above, such as positioning behind the driver's seat or forming an L-Shape by integrating the rear and side, given that the interior dimensions are sufficient, it's possible to create variations. This setup might occupy more sleeping space and is better suited for solo van life, offering extensive storage and workspace. This analysis covers the diverse modifications made for minivans in van life. Of course, there are other arrangements beyond these, but we've focused on analyzing some commonly seen modifications. It's proven that you don't necessarily need a cargo van to embrace van life. C. Demonstration Simulation In order to present the differences in various arrangements more intuitively, I used the same car and rearranged the furniture to simulate the layouts I just introduced, for everyone's reference, to find a suitable way to customize it for themselves. 1. Behind the driver's seat The work surface is placed behind the driver's seat, creating a very spacious central area. When the rear door is open, you can sit at the back and enjoy the view. If the vehicle is high enough and you prefer not to sit on the floor, you can create a two-tier setup to increase storage space. When using the tabletop, you can sit on a low stool. 2. Rear Type Placing the work surface at the rear of the car also leaves the central area free and allows connectivity with the driver's seat. It enables access to items from the rear or the use of the tabletop but requires entry and exit through the side door. The second tier, designed to be suspended, allows for placing a board above, creating space to store items below. Three, sidebar type. Placing the work surface on the left or right side inside the car is suitable for slightly shorter vehicle models. The modular design allows for easy switching between single and double tier setups.
4. L shape. If you prefer a larger work surface that extends from the front or rear to the side of the car, this mode is more suitable for solo van life and requires a spacious interior. It allows for a larger workspace, enabling cooking and work activities simultaneously. If you prefer not to lie directly on the ground, you can arrange boxes horizontally to form a bed frame, placing a mattress on top for a more effortless getting in and out of bed. This single-sided bed setup maintains maximum interior height in the vehicle. Upon waking up, removing the mattress transforms the boxes into a tabletop, or rearranging it creates elevated seating or a table. Through this use of modular furniture, we demonstrate various advantages and disadvantages, offering both organization and aesthetic appeal while ensuring a comfortable user experience. This approach requires minimal effort, maintains the option to revert the setup, and doesn't damage the vehicle interior, making it possible to convert a camper without leaving a trace of modification. Conclusions In summary, the choice of a vehicle should align with your living environment and needs. Larger vehicles offer spacious interiors but face limitations in city driving and parking. Smaller cars maneuver better in urban settings but have limited interior space. Select a vehicle based on your lifestyle and requirements. Maintain interior height for comfortable living space, especially in smaller vehicles. Regarding seating, it's advisable to remove only seats that can be quickly taken out without tools, ensuring immediate restoration when needed. Flatten and fold remaining seats to swiftly accommodate passengers or cargo needs. Avoiding permanent damage to the vehicle body or compromising safety factors. It also retains the vehicle's value for potential resale. Treat your vehicle like a mobile home, outfitting it with specific furniture and appliances tailored for comfortable living. Choose items suitable for in-car living, organize them efficiently, enabling quick departures without fuss. Modular designs reduce maintenance costs, adapting readily to different needs, seasons, and styles, making your vehicle an adaptable, distinctive space. Decorating your vehicle isn't about showcasing for others but creating a pleasant, relaxing space for yourself. Even with a limited budget in part-time van life, you can enjoy the beauty of outdoor living. Whether living in your vehicle long-term or exploring car camping on weekends or vacations, this video aims to provide useful information and inspiration for your journey.